for tuning in today's show. Today we'll be talking about a concept in computer science called pass by reference and pass by value. Um, we'll be focusing on its implementation in Python today, but the underlying concept can be applied to different programming languages. So what exactly is pass by reference and pass by value? Before we go into a formal definition of it, I just wanted to go over a little brain teaser in Python. So imagine that we had the script that has something like we created a variable called num1 and we assigned it to 100. And then we created a new variable called num2 and we assigned it to the value of num1. And then we took the original variable num1 and we added 100 to it. What do you think will print out when I run line four? I'll give you a second just to think about it. So if we just think about it in our head, we would think intuitively that 100 gets assigned to num1 and then at the very end, num1 becomes 200. So we just take that 100 and then we add 100 to it, so 200. Num2 uh, doesn't get affected at all since uh, this line of code where we equal the two happens before we increment num1. So I would assume that num1 is 200 and num2 is still 100. And if we were to print it out, that's exactly what happens. And this is the idea of pass by value, where when I do this assignment operator on line two, I'm copying over the whole value of 100 from num1 to num2. So num1 has its own copy of 100 and num2 has its own copy of 100. So now let's talk about uh, a different brain teaser. So imagine I had a list and it had three items in it, one, two, and three. And imagine I created another list, list two, and I assign it to list one. And so now what I want to do is I take the original list one and I append the value three to it. What do you think would happen if you were to run this code and what would the values of list one and list two be? I'll give you a second to think about it. So if we went with this original idea in the previous brain teaser, we would think it would be very similar in that list one would be one, two, three, three, and list two would be one, two, and three because of how this append happens after we equal list two to list one. But in reality, this is what, what happens. Both lists are now updated to be one, two, three, and three. And you might be asking yourself, why is this? And so this is the idea of pass by reference, where what we're doing here in this line two is a little bit different than what we were doing before. In the previous example, we were taking that value of 100 and creating a whole new copy of it and assigning it to num2. But in this example on the right hand side, we're not really creating a whole new list of 1, 2, and 3. We're just taking the previous list, list 1, and we're just having list 2 kind of point to it in memory. So let's go into a step by step of what's happening. So if we look back at the first brain teaser, we'll see that on the first line, we create this variable called num1 and we set it to 100. So on the right hand side, here's kind of like what's happening in memory. This variable num1 is pointing to some memory location that has 100 added. And so in the next example, when we create num2 and we set it to num1, what happens is num2 gets set to a different memory location than num1 is, and that also gets its own copy of 100. So the value of 100 appears twice in the memory bank. So what happens is that when we increment num1, the memory location that num1 is pointing to gets incremented, but the memory location that num2 is pointing to stays the same. So that's why when we print out the values, num1 is 200 and num2 is still 100. And so this is the idea of pass by value because the value itself is being passed one variable to another and a whole copy is created. And so this idea of creating a copy when I do the system um, equals operator is seen in all the primitive types in Python. So strings, integers, booleans, and floats follow the same idea. So now let's talk about that other example where you had that list. So just like before, when we on line one declare a list one and we set it to one, two, three, in memory, we have the same idea where list one or the variable list one is pointed to some place in memory. And in that place of memory, we have the list one, two, three. We won't go too much of how lists are stored in memory because um, the idea is that uh, the start of the list starts at one place in memory and then we are able to increment it and store, let's say uh, a range of values in the slot in memory, but that's not for this discussion. But what is is that on the second line, when we take this list two and equal to list one, in memory, list one and list two now point to the same place in memory. Not like before where num2 got its own copy. List two is just looking at the same place list one is. And this is this idea of pass by reference where I'm not really having it copy the exact value over. I'm just copying the reference to it. So they both point to the same place. So that's why where in memory location one, when that gets updated, from this list one dot append three, and we have this resulting list one, two, three, three, both list one and list two are now pointing to this updated list. 
which is why both uh, variables are one, two, three, and three. And so this idea of path by reference in Python is seen with all types of objects and data structures. So with sets, tuples, lists, dictionaries, and objects, name a few. Um, but this is this idea that here we're not really creating a whole new copy of it. We're creating something called a shallow copy, just a reference to uh, what was being originally passed. So now that we get that out of the way, um, I wanted to go over a small example and then we can conclude. And so here I want to talk about the problem of side effects and in coding interviews, uh, what you should be aware of when you are passing lists into like different functions and things like that. So if I go over to REPL and let's say I created a function called add one. And right now, all this will do is it'll take in a number. And what we want to do is create a, uh, a variable called uh, increment of number. And all that will be is taking the number that's passed in and we'll add one to it. And then we will return back the incremented number. So if we were to create a variable, so we'll call it, let's say 10 and assign it to the value 10. And then what I want to do is make 11 and have it be equal to add one of 10. And now I want to print out 10 and 11. So if I were to run this code, uh, I have to define the function before just something that I have to do with REPL, I would get that 10 is 10 and 11 is 11. So that sounds pretty good. And so this is the idea of pass by value and that when I pass in this 10 into this function, a whole new copy of it's being created, which is why when I print 10 and 11 from this function, they print out two different numbers, not printing out the same variable. So, whoops, that is the uh, JavaScript uh, comments, and then that's how you do the Python block comment. So now let's do a different example just to show you the problems of uh, passing in objects uh, naively into functions. So let's say I did another function somewhere called uh, add one, but here I'm taking a list. And what I want to do is for each item in the list, so let's say um, for i in range line of list and we can make a variable called length which will just be the line of the list and so here we can just pass in that what you just want to do is take whatever's at a current position in uh the list we just want to increment it by one and then at the very end we want to just return our list so imagine we created a list called list one and we had to be equal to one two three and now let's say we wanted to create a incremented list one. And all we're going to do is use this function called add one, where we passed in the original list. And what we would assume is that list one would stay one, two, three, and incremented list one would be now two, three, four, since all we're doing in this add one function is looking at each item in the uh, inputted list and just adding one to it. But that's not really the case here. If I were to run this code, you see that I get 234 and 234. Because what's happening is that just like what we talked about before in the example, when I pass in list one into my function and I change it, both list one and increment list one are being changed since we only have one list in memory right now. And so this is the idea of a shallow copy because, um, so if I put up here, shallow copy since both list one and incremental list one will be pointing to the same list. So now let's just talk about a quick way to get around that. So what we want to do instead is create a deep copy. And so there's some built-in libraries that you can do it, but I always think it's a good idea just to know how you can implement it yourself if you needed to do so in like an interview or if you needed to do so if you're like on the job. And it's pretty simple, right? So let's say I were to copy this function define add one, and let's just put in um, a specifier, let's call it deep copy. What I wanna do is I basically wanna create a deep copy of the list. And so what we can do is a little bit of list comprehension. So I can just say something like uh, new list equals uh, I for I in list. So basically uh, we go through each item in the past in list and we just want to just get each item to create a new one. So if I were to comment out this real quick, 
and I were to print out new list, and I were to create, use the same border plate as before, so let's do list one, and this incremental list in here we call the function, all that's going to do is basically create a copy of whatever we passed in. So now if we just take the resulting code, so we take this stuff that we used before, and instead of using the passed in list that we had before, so we want the same logic, so we'll take the link, and we'll pass in new list, and <clears throat> we'll say for i in range length, let's say the new list at a given position, we're incrementing by one, and now we're returning the new list. If we were to run this new code, rather than having list one and increment list one be the same list, we now have two different copies. So list one still retains its old values, one, two, three, and increment list one now has the new list, two, three, four. So this is the idea of a beat copy where we are explicitly creating a new, ver new copy of the inputted list. Um, so some things to keep in mind if you were to use this in an interview, because we had to create a deep copy, um, our time complexity and space complexity is O of N for time and space complexity. Space complexity, um, where N is the number of items in the inputted uh, list, because we have to iterate through each item here. And, um, and not only that, we also have to create the space and memory to store a copy of each item. Um, but yeah. So that's why whenever you're creating or answering interview questions, always it's nice to ask your interviewer, can I mutate the original list? Can I mutate the original matrix? Um, should I be worried about side effects in this function? Um, but that's pretty much it for today. If you have any more questions, just put it in the comments. Um, and thanks for watching.